What's up, YouTube? Zachary Michaels here. I'm an actor, and this is An Actor Reacts. Today, we'll be talking about season one of P Valley. Let's discuss. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. P Valley premiered on Stars July 12, 2020. The series was created by Katori Hall and based on her play, Pussy Valley. The series follows several people who work at a strip club, The Pink, in the fictional city of Chuckalisa, Mississippi. Okay, so P Valley. Um, now, I was late on this show, but I kept hearing people talking about it. So I figured I'd give it a shot. And then once I started it, I there were like four episodes, four or five episodes out. And I wasn't like sure if I liked it at first. It took me a little bit to adjust to like the uh, style of the show, I guess. But like once I did, I love this show. It's probably one of my favorites of 2020 so far. So I'm excited to talk about it. Um, we will be getting the spoilers in this review and like specifically on that season finale. So just be aware of that if you haven't finished the season yet. Uh, but let's get into the good, the bad, and I'll tell you my rating for season one of P Valley. Okay, the good. Um, I got a lot of good for this show. It's it's just I like actually some of the elements that I wasn't quite sure about and like the pilot is what are what my favorite parts are about the show. So like the kind of different kind of visual style, like it doesn't visually look like a lot of other TV shows that I've seen. Like I've seen this kind of style before, but not a lot. So I like that they kind of took a different approach visually and I guess like through the cinematography because it puts you it feels like real. It feels real to life. And I think that really worked for the show. And like, that's another one of my favorite elements is like the kind of how real and raw the show feels. Like it feels like super gritty. And like, even like that first episode, like the first like 45 minutes maybe, I wasn't sure if I liked it because of like how dirty it felt. Like you can feel like the filth through the show, um, like through the screen, I mean, like, it just feels like kind of grimy and dirty and and it just feels like real raw and like gritty. And I think that really works because the show, you know, it's about these people who are hustling in Mississippi in the strip club, which can't like when in the moments when they have the lights on, like during the day, you get to see how kind of dirty the place is. But at night when, you know, the stripping and stuff is going on, it looks so glamorous and, 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 you know, and high. And I like, I like how they were able to get that feel through the, the, the camera to the audience. Like that's one of my favorite elements for sure. Cause it just, it really brings you into this world. And that's what like my other favorite element of the show is, is that it, they expertly like through the writing and the directing and, you know, the visuals and the acting, it really brings you into this world. And I kind of like stepping into a, like, situations and stories that I'm not really familiar with. Like, I don't know if you guess by looking at me, but I'm not really like a frequenter of like Mississippi strip clubs. Like that's not my day to day. Um, so I like kind of being introduced into that world in such a real and authentic way, like with these real characters and this real story. And just, it all just felt real, like, like authentic. That's like the the best part about the show is its authenticity. It didn't feel like anybody was putting on. It just felt like these are these people and this is their life and like we're getting a vision into their world. Um, and then what? A, oh, like the cinematography, really good. Like again, visually, this show is so interesting to watch, especially like when like it's at night and the strip club is like you know popping. It's like it's just so interesting to watch like the lighting in the like all the colors on the black skin it just it all complements so well and it just it just makes it really interesting to 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 watch and it's like a treat for my eyes beyond the story but now we can get into the story i think that again i just like being introduced to this kind of world that I'm not really familiar with. And I think this fictional world is built so well that it just makes it so interesting to watch. Cause the main like premise of the show is pretty, uh, 
it's pretty simple, just like following these people that work at this strip club. But their individual stories and backstories and journeys throughout the show is just so, it's, it like keeps me on the edge of my seat, like Uncle Clifford with the pink and like the the backstory with that and how it's been passed down through the family and you know he's inherited all this debt and then had to take out more debt because you know one he didn't know better and you know they kind of trick you with that kind of stuff so following that journey and then trying to figure out what was going on with autumn and mercedes trying to trying to get out of the strip club and open her open her dance studio and um uh, Mississippi with the abusive, like there's so many different things going on that you just like, you want to know more about them all throughout the entire show. And again, they just build it so well. Um, and character wise, I think that all the characters are so well developed. Oh, f for the most part, I think there are a few characters and a few like backstories that aren't really explored as much as I would have wanted them to. And I'll get into that in my bad, but for the most part, a lot of the, most of the characters are, are really developed. Uh, my favorite is my girl, uh, Keyshawn, Mississippi. Like, one, she does a thing on the pole. She's beautiful. But I like seeing her, her journey throughout the season. And I like her, like, I like, I like her spirit. Like, she makes me smile anytime she's on screen. Um, and I liked her journey from, like, this kind of more innocent and girl that wasn't believing in herself who like thinks the only thing she's good at is being pretty and she's not courageous and this and that to her kind of becoming this like it girl at the club and like you know people are paying to come see her specifically like she's headlining so I like that journey for her now I did not like where her journey ended up this season but again we'll get into that in the bad but Keyshawn is my girl. I love her. I was rooting for her. I was happy for her with all the success that she got this season. Um, Uncle Clifford. Now, again, back to like the, I like being introduced to things that I'm not familiar with. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a character like Uncle Clifford on TV. So that was just really interesting for me to see like how, how confident and, and like tough Clifford is and like, how like you know fabulous he uh Clifford is like um just like the way that they're able to portray that character is so intriguing to me and not to mention Clifford is uh hilarious to me like some of the best like one-liners in the show like um how Clifford never says uh Autumn's name correctly like calls her like September October like midnight, like just a bunch of stuff that uh, Clifford is calling Autumn throughout the show. Hilarious. Or like the scene with, um, I can't remember, but like the, the mixed brother when after he got beat up and he's like, you know, your cracker side coming out, you better add a uh instead of the ER. Like that was just hilarious. Like it's so many things throughout the show. Clifford just had me cracking up. Uh, just really interesting character. And I liked how they had Loretta Devine in there as Clifford's uh, grandmother. Um, just really good character. Oh, and like how with um, Lil Murda, like Lil Murda was like he deaded the situation with, uh, Mer uh, not Mercedes, but uh, Mississippi. And then Uncle Clifford's like, oh no, you killed her? Like, one, that's such an old person thing. Like, no, he didn't kill her. But just like, I like, I, I just really enjoy that character. It's like new and interesting kind of character and then just really hilarious. And I enjoy Clifford's confidence and just like, again, how like fabulous Clifford is and how like, how how they portray that character on screen. It's just really good. Shout out to the actor. Uh, I don't remember his name, but I'll put it up on the screen. He did an amazing job with Clifford and the writers, and just, again, real authentic. Um, another one of my favorites is uh, Lil Murda. Um, again, a really funny character, and one that I kind of, that I, like, I connect with on, like, the aspirational level, like, how he is with his music. That's how I feel about, like, acting. So anytime he got, like, little wins throughout the season, like, when he, uh, when 
Mississippi was dancing to his song and he just felt so like proud, like that's my song. And like, or when the uh, the manager came and so, like all those little moments, like I was like, yes, Lil Murda. Like that made me feel so good. Like at, also as an aspiring artist, like I was rooting for him the entire time. And then I found that relationship with uh, Uncle Clifford really interesting and how that all played out. Um, and I like seeing like you see like the little murder side of him, and then uh, you see the more the uh, what's his name? I damn, what's his name? Uh, Lashawn, Lamarcus, Lamarcus. Um, I like seeing like the the more Lamarcus side and how he was like more uh, you know intimate with Clifford and like more soft and more caring. And then like I actually really like how, like I was rooting for them in the show, but I like how their story ended this season. Cause I feel like that's realistic. Like he's, you know, sometimes, especially after what his uh, friend and manager just said to him, like he felt like he had to choose. And in that moment he chose himself, even though he, you know, loves Clifford. And then Clifford like saying like, when you figure out what you want to do, like I just thought that that whole situation was handled really well. Um, so I'm interested to see like what happens with them in season two and with Lil Murder's career. Um, but I just, and he's also just really funny, but I, a lot of the characters in the show are really funny. And then there's uh, Mercedes, who, Mercedes is not one of my top, top characters, but I do like her though. She's like, she annoys me sometimes though, like with how like intimidated she seemed to be by uh, Haley. It was just like, you know, like you're the you're the you're the big girl here. Like, why are you intimidated by this new girl? Like, don't care about her. Like, go on, do your thing. Everybody's here for Mercedes. You about to open your studio. Like, you got bigger things. Why are you worried about this girl? Um, so like that was annoying me at first. But, you know, I, I did come to warm up for her to her and I, I like root for her. Honestly, I root for all the ladies. But I really root for her and her journey to like, you know, make it out of the strip club. Not that stripping's bad, but like, you know, she wants to do something else with her life now. She wants to get her daughter back and she wants to, um, you know, open her dance studio. And I was so pissed at her mom when she stole that money like that. That pissed me off. But we'll get to that later. But, um, you know, I just I root for her the best. And I hope that she gets it together in season two. And I am glad that she and um, Haley did come together because it really did annoy me when she was so intimidated. But once they came together, it became like this dynamic duo type thing. And I thought that worked really well. Um, and I loved like the ending of, of this season, specifically with those two, when Mercedes like goes in there to, to help her like that. Those scenes had me on the edge of my seat um, but I'm, I'm glad they killed, what's his name, Montavious or whatever his name is. Like, I loved that. Even though, I don't know if he's dead, because they never quite showed that. Like, we saw blood coming out, but they never quite addressed it again. But I think he's dead, but who knows, he might pop up again season two, because, you know, Haley Autumn thought she killed him before, but he came right back again. Um, but I love that ending of those two coming together and them sticking up for each other. I loved, uh, seeing... Haley that kind of at first think she was gonna run away, but then in the end, like deciding to come back and save Mercedes, like I was like, okay. I was like looking at her kind of side eye for a second, but then when she came back, I was like, okay, you know, these these two girls come together. And then I li I love that like the ending ending with um seeing Haley come back with the money and buy the pink and save them. I kind of predicted that was going to happen when we heard that, like, in that scene, they were like, 250000 He was like, how I know this all my $250,000? Um, and then we hear towards the end that Andre has a cap of 200000 I was like, oh, okay, for sure, Haley about to come in and buy the pink. And she did. And I'm pretty sure that he let her because um, the dude, uh, Bill, I think his name is, answered the phone, but he hung up. So I think he he let her win. So I'm kind of interested to see where that's going to go in season two because it looked like his wife kind of kind of picked up on the vibes between Andre and Haley. Um, so I'm interested with that. And just seeing what's going to go on with the pink in season two. Um, yeah, so what else good? Did I have anything? Oh, I the stripping. 
really good. I think that uh, all the ladies, for the most part, except for one, which we'll get into in, in my bad, but all the ladies so talented and just like looked real good and did, like they're good strippers. Um, I don't know if they hired strippers to act in this show or they like train the actors to strip. Either way, like they did, they were doing their thing throughout this season. Another amazing element throughout the show, like you, and you get the, the show really shows you like all the athleticism that it takes. And like when in the parts of the story, when they would like be climbing up the pole and all the music would drop out, those like, those had my heart racing. Cause I always thought something bad was about to happen, but it was really just showing that how much effort it takes to climb up that pole and spin down and look good while doing it. Like they, they were on it. Um, so shout out to, to the stripping, like the, the talent that that takes shout out to the women for being amazing at it and looking good and like just a lot of good elements in this show. And then the final thing that I want to touch on in my good section, the music, the soundtrack is like up there with the story, like that the theme song alone, one of the best theme songs that I remember in recent years, like the down in the valley with it. Uh, 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 uh. Like, I love that part every episode. And usually I skip forward in shows like the theme song part, but that one, every every episode, I'm like, hey, like just a real good theme song. Um, and then just the music that they play throughout. And I actually like Lil Murder's music. Like, you know, sometimes with shows like the music that like the artists do is terrible. And they like kind of make fun of that at the beginning. Like they're making fun of his music, which is another like hilarious part when like Mercedes is like, is you rapping in cursive? Like real good. And to see like his journey getting better. And like that song, that new song that he performed in the finale, that is my song to like M, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, humpback, humpback, I, Mississippi, pride, pride. Like, I love that song. I was listening to that last night as I was like writing up my notes for the season. Like, the music is another good part of this show. Like, and not just the original music, like all the songs that they play throughout. Just like, really good. Like, the, 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 again, this is one of my favorite shows of 2020 so far. Like the story, the characters, the um, the the music, the 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 stripping, the like the cinematography, the lighting, all the colors. Like there's so many good elements. Like it, it this show makes me feel it on all levels, and it just feel again feels so real and authentic and gritty and grimy and honestly a little dirty which works so well for the show um i think all, that's all i got on my goods though so let's get into the bad okay so the bad i honestly don't have that much bad um again like a lot of the stuff that i wasn't quite sure about at the start i ended up loving so there are a few things though like, like kind of story wise and some character things that i don't think were as developed as i would have wanted them to be um, but so first off, we'll start with Haley, Autumn, whatever you want to call her. Um, now I like the character. I think that she was a good, like eyes into the story. It's just like some elements of her journey that I could have, that I thought could have been developed more. Like her backstory. I did, I did like at the start how we were only getting, you know, bits and pieces and I was kind of able to piece things together and I kind of like, you know, figured out what it was. But I felt like that kind of got dragged out because we don't really officially find out what her backstory is until the finale. And it just, I, again, I liked how they were piecing it together at the beginning, but like eight episodes just felt too long. I could have done like two, three, maybe four, and then we actually find out what happened. But like dragging that out throughout the season was just a little too much for me. Um, and then... I just think she was overall a little bland. Like, again, I like the character. She wasn't terrible, but she just, she needed a little more flavor, especially, especially as a stripper. Like, they was going crazy for her at, at, at the pink. And I don't get it. Like, beautiful woman, don't get me wrong. Like, beautiful. But as a stripper, like, when you got... 
Mercedes, you got Mississippi, you got Mississippi, M-I, crooked letter, crooked, like, you got Mississippi, you got Mercedes, you even got freaking Gidget, but y'all going crazy over, over Autumn Night, like, she looked bored anytime she was on the stage, like, she was giving a lazy twerk, like, she looked like she was high anytime she was stripping. And I just, I, like, I mean, I get it. Light skin privilege. That's what they were, like, commenting on with her. Like, she barely puts out any effort. But because she's light skin and pretty and good hair, like, she's going to get more. But I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me. Like, I would take Mississippi over over Autumn Night any day. Um, but I did. Again, I liked where her story ended up because I liked the team up with her and uh, Mercedes and I liked seeing them kind of depend on each other and like kind of open up to each other. And, you know, I liked seeing them come together for, um, against Montavious and Haley, like thinking she was going to like run away, but then coming back and, and saving her cause she cared about her or like when she tried to uh, give her that extra 10 K for the gym, I thought that all those moments were really good. And I did like that, uh, her like situationship with, um, with Andre. I thought that was interesting and I'm, you know, interested to see where that leads in the future. But just again, like not a terrible character, just need a little more flavor for me. And I did think her backstory was dragged out a little too long. Um, let's see what else. Oh, something I did not like at all in this finale was freaking Mississippi pulling the gun out on Diamond to to protect her her abusive baby daddy. Like, what? One, I didn't like her baby daddy at all. Like, that he was abusing her. I didn't like who he was. Like, there was so many elements about that relationship that I did not like. Um, but I thought, you know, when we saw that um, Autumn's gun was missing, that, you know, I was like, okay, Mississippi about to shoot him. That's what he deserved. Uh, and then she pulls out the gun on Diamond, who was defending your honor. Like, that pissed me off. Like, ooh, but I mean, it makes sense. Like, th that story was, it was, it was such a realistic portrayal of how abusive, like, the, how, how that situation is. Like, her not really having confidence and her, even when she grows kind of confident, still wanting to protect this man who doesn't care about her at all, who really does not care about her. Um, when And when you have a dude like Diamond who's willing to protect you, who's willing to fight for your honor, you like go against him for this man who's terrible for you, to you. Uh, and I, ooh, I was, I, that that pissed me off. And I love, I love Mississippi, but that that made me so mad. But again, it's, it's so real. And I feel like a lot of people in that situation would do the same. I, I loved Diamond fighting for her, though. Or not even for her, but, like, beating up uh, Derek. Because that's what he... Though, I will say, Derek... Derek Derek held his own in that situation. Derek was for sure... Like, it was not an easy fight for Diamond. Like, Derek was doing his thing. But I love seeing Diamond, like, beat him down. Because that's what he deserved. I needed, I needed it, it to end uh, even worse for him. But, uh, you know... Mississippi came and ruined that. Um, what else? Um, oh, there were, I think, a few underdeveloped parts in the story, like uh, like Gidget and her drug addict mom. I feel like that was kind of set up, but it never really went anywhere. Same kind of thing with Gidget and like her her boyfriend. Like that was kind of set up, never really went anywhere. Um, you know, like, it just, I didn't know why it was part of the story if it wasn't going to be developed more. Or, like, uh, Gidget's boyfriend and, like, Big L and, like, him, like, Big L wanting to hold the drugs for the boyfriend to try to save the pink. That, again, didn't really go anywhere. I, I guess it kind of, you know, got Big L off of his job in that finale to put, um, to put Mercedes and, um, Autumn in the worst situation and not have anybody there for them because Big Al was off doing stuff with the drugs. But by that point, the pink was already going to be going on auction tomorrow. So Big Al having the drugs wouldn't have saved anything anyway. But um, it just, uh, I felt like they could have done something else to get Big Al out of there. But like, 
him like I don't know it just again it's stuff like that never really went anywhere for me um let's see what else uh do 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 oh Mercedes and her daughter I would have really liked to explore that story more because we kind of learned that you know this is her daughter Mercedes wants to get her back but we didn't go anything beyond that like I would have loved to know the backstory on that because if if um uh, Mercedes is only 25 and her daughter is like 13 she was real young when she had her and this is a mar was a married man so he was grown like what is the situation with that how do they know each other like like that whole thing like i would have loved some information the backstory on that i would have liked to see mercedes trying to get her daughter back more um just i would have liked to explore that more but i guess they can go into that in season two and then i just i don't like how much they broke down mercedes by this final episode like the whole season she's trying to do good she's trying to do good she's you know she's trying to get her daughter back she's trying to she's trying to get start her gym she's trying to be a better person and by the end she's gone through so much that she goes crying back to her mom like that pissed me off like one, her mom does not deserve her forgiveness. She stole 20000 from her. It doesn't seem like remorseful about it at all because God told God didn't tell you to do nothing. You took that money because you wanted to take that money because you're a terrible person. Like, And then to have Mercedes going back there crying for her mom, like basically begging her mom, like, no, that did not sit right with me. Your mom has not earned your forgiveness. If anything, your mom needs to be the one crying. Your mom needs to be the one begging for your forgiveness. And the fact that they gave the mom the upper hand, they had the mom like, oh, no, go ask your God about forgiveness. Because remember, I'm dead to you. Like, oh, they had me heated. Like, I, her mom is one of my least favorite characters, for sure. Maybe my least favorite. Uh... No, her mom's my least favorite for sure because I don't like when people I don't like when people like try to stand on the word of God to kind of, you know, overshadow all the foul ish that they're doing. So yeah, her mom's my least favorite. Like if you bad, be bad. If if you crooked, be crooked. But don't try to like God told me this, God told me that, God got no. You're a terrible person and I don't think God would commend you for any of the things that you're doing, especially not stealing $20,000 from your daughter. Ooh, she had me heated. Um, but anyway, I think I think that's all I got on that. But um, let's see. Oh, my final bad for season one of P-Valley. It was only eight episodes. Like, eight episodes was not enough. Now, I know I came in late, so I, it really kind of felt like three or four episodes to me, but... Eight episodes wasn't enough. Just when it started getting good, it was like, oh, the finale next week. Oh, like it just, it, I needed more. I needed more time. And, and then some of the things that I felt were underdeveloped could have been explored more. Like it just, it wasn't enough time. So, you know, I hope they fix that season two. Hope we, hopefully we can get like 10 episodes, maybe even 12, be like kind of a full season, like a normal TV shows. But uh, that's, uh, it, we need more than eight for sure. I don't know how many more, but we need more than eight episodes. Uh, those are all my bads, though. I really, again, didn't have that many. Just a few things that felt kind of underdeveloped to me or some things that needed a little more flavor. Uh, but now let's get into my final thoughts, and I'll tell you my rating for season one and my hopes for season two. P Valley season one. Again, I think one of my favorites of 2020. Um, I loved, again, how real and gritty it felt. I loved the cinematography. I loved the storytelling, the directing. I loved the characters. And just the overall journey of the show, I just, I really enjoyed it. So I would give P-Valley Season 1 a 9 out of 10. Uh, really good score for a really good first season. And I'm excited for Season 2. I'm glad they got renewed. Um, I, I don't know when that's going to come out with, you know, COVID and everything, es especially with how like intimate and how like, you know, on it the show is. Oh, that's another good thing that I kind of forgot to, to speak on, but in how real and gritty it is, like 
they not afraid to show nothing on this show, like show nothing. And I like that that element. It. When shows aren't afraid to like kind of, you know, show real things and show different nudity. And they, like the show just shows so much stuff that you don't expect. And they do they do a really good job at, job at it. So uh, I'm really excited for season two. I'm kind of, uh, let's see. I'm interested to see uh, Uncle Clifford and Haley like running the pink together. I think that's gonna make for a really interesting story. Um, I think that alone it makes me excited because I'm sure Haley is gonna be on her uppity stuff where her and Uncle Clifford are gonna clash because I get she technically owns the pink now, right? Like it is her club. But even though like Uncle Clifford's like the face of the pink. But, like, it's kind of technically Haley's now, so she could kind of do whatever she wants with it. So I'm interested to see how that dynamic's going to be in season two. I'm sure they're going to be clashing. Um, I'm interested on more of, like, Haley and uh, Andre. Because, again, I feel like uh, Andre's wife kind of picked up on that vibe. So is Andre going to be in Chuckalisa? Is he going to leave his wife? Is she going to move down there? Is he going to have to be sneaking around with Haley? Or is Andre just going to be gone from the show? So I'm interested what's going to be happening with that. And uh, is the casino gone now? Or are they going to try to develop it in some other kind of way? Like, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what, how they're going to do season two. Um, oh, I, back to Haley and Uncle Clifford. I hope she kind of gives him part ownership, maybe. Uh, cause th that'll be the only fair way, but I don't think she's going to do that. I think she's going to try to own it full out and then they're going to be clashing. But, um, so I'm interested uh, back again to the casino. I'm jumping all around, but I'm interested to see like the casino, like what's going to happen with that. Oh, and like the two racist brothers, like, cause they already beat up, um, I don't remember his name, but the mixed brother, they already beat him up when they found out about the leasing. So now I'm sure they're going to be even more pissed. Like, so what are they going to do? They were threatening the mayor. Like, what's going to happen with that? And I'm kind of interested what's going to be like the 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 thing that they're going to be fighting against in season two. Because this season one was kind of, you know, Haley's backstory and her, you know, trying to get the money and get away from Montavious. And then Uncle Clifford trying to save the pink, but now the pink is saved. So where are we going from here? Um, let's see what else. Oh, okay. I hope that Mercedes gets on her two feet. Like, I hope that she's able to rise again. Because, again, I just did not like how she ended the season. Like, broken and crying and with nothing, really. So I hope that she's able to to boss up in season two. I wonder if she's going to take that, that deal from the coach. Because he, I don't know, I don't want her to. Because I feel like that's leading down more of the path of her being, like, broken. Because he was basically going to own her. And Mercedes, I love you. I think you're worth more than $10,000. Or maybe, I don't even think you got that money no more. So maybe $20,000 if he gives you all the money. I wouldn't accept that. Like, work, grind, do your thing, figure out another way. Uh but I'll be interested to see where she goes with that. And I want them to develop her story more with her daughter. We need to get the backstory of that whole situation in season two. And then we also, like, I want to see her kind of fighting for her daughter. Like, you know, start some court processing. I want to see that story develop. And that, that'll be interesting for her in season two. I hope that only bad things happen to Mercedes Mama in season two. Um, I hope that her church fails. I hope that she goes broke. I hope that she loses her hair. I hate her mama. Yes, hate her mama. And I hope that only terrible things happen to her. Um, let's see, what else? Um, uh, oh, I need also need Derek. I forgot about him. Another character I hate. I'd, I'd say that Derek and Derek and uh, Mercedes' mama are neck and neck with for the worst characters in this show so i hope that derek gets what's coming to him uh preferably by at the hands of um, my girl mississippi i hope that she breaks out of that situation and not piss me off anymore by protecting him and going back to him even though i don't care how re realistic it is like i want her out of that situation um and i kind of want her to get back with diamond though i think diamond deserves better because she pulled the gun on him but I, I kind of hope they get end up getting together and, you know, they get something going on in season two. Um, yeah, I, I hope uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Little Murda in season two. 
Um, you know, is he going to, you know, get success? Is he going to get back with Uncle Clifford? Is he going to, like, come out? Is he going to be, like, this public rapper in a relationship with uh, Clifford? Like, that'll be interesting to see the dynamic of that. I hope we get more Loretta Divine in season two because she was hilarious. Like, a lot of good lines. Some that I'm not going to repeat because I was about to say the one that she said about God don't want me I still got my, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But a lot of funny stuff from her. Uh, I hope we get to see more of her in season two. Just really good. I'm excited for season two. Um, oh, I hope Gidget's story gets more developed in season two for sure. Because, uh, you know, it, I, it kind of, it was set up nicely, but it never really went anywhere. So I'd be interested to see her and her mama, who's a drug addict. Like, that, it could be an interesting journey for that. So... I'm excited for that. Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's all I got on season one of P Valley. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a surprise favorite for me. I'm excited for season two. I hope that it comes sooner than later, even though COVID might mess some things up. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on season one of P Valley. Let me know some of your favorite moments. What are your least favorite moments? Who are your favorite characters? Who do you hate? Uh, I want to have a conversation with y'all about this show because I feel like throughout this review, I kept forgetting stuff. So I, I want to have a conversation below in the comments uh, and talk about P Valley because I really enjoyed this season. And again, I'm excited for season two. Don't forget to like this video, uh, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for stopping by. See y'all next time.